What is going on, Jet fans? Matt O'Leary back with another video. Excited to get into this one today. Yesterday, we had a quick reaction video come out after the New York Jets traded for Hassan Reddick. But today, I kind of just want to get into a little bit more in depth what his impact is going to be on this New York Jets defense. We'll get into whether an extension's incoming or not and kind of just take it from there and finish the full reaction. Yesterday was like, oh my gosh, it happened. Let's just get a video out quick. But now we're going to kind of get into the nitty gritty details of how this impacts the Jets in 2024. So first, I think you just have to look at where the Jets defense was over the last couple of years and what kind of player they are getting in Hassan Reddick and where that should impact. So the Jets were third in defensive DVOA last season, so they were a top three defense the year prior in 2022 they were sixth in the NFL I think like for me I can comfortably predict even with even if there's some sort of regression whether it's from injuries or whatever that they are going to comfortably be in the top 10 which is a really really nice feeling going into a season anything in the top 10 I think is great but I honestly it's going to be closer to top five uh, I, I'm, I'm comfortable going that they're going to be somewhere close to five maybe it's plus or minus two spots they can get up to three they could be somewhere around seven is there a world where they could be the number one defense of course I just don't feel like I'm going to give those lofty expectations and say they're going to be the number one defense in the NFL could they be yeah, there's a chance for it, but I think, as I said, comfortably in the top 10, which is great, and probably much closer to top five, right around where they've been the last two years, because Hassan Reddick is a good replacement for Bryce Huff. We can get into the debate on whether they should have kept Bryce Huff or, uh, in, or if the pivot to Reddick is actually better. Let's not do that. Let's not fight and, and argue about it. It's not worth it. The Jets just have Hassan Reddick now. So instead, we should just look at what Hassan Reddick has done in his career and how that's going to impact the Jets and his role as a pass rusher who just eats up sacks. Hassan Reddick had 67 pressures last season, which is the same as Bryce Huff, actually. If you, you look at their their numbers, they both had the same number of pressures. Uh Reddick did it in more snaps. He played 599 pass rush snaps. So his pressure percentage was 7.6% and a win percentage of 14.4% on the season. That is still very, very good numbers. We know where Bryce Huff ranks in terms of uh, win percentage and pressure percentage. He is one of the top like three in the league. So yes, he has better numbers there. Pressures end up being the same, though, 67 and 67. And Bryce Huff, uh, excuse me, uh, Hassan Reddick, his sacks end up being 11. And he has 16 and 11 sacks over the last two years. If you want to look at the last four years, double digits every single season, 12 and a half, 11, 16, and 11 over the last four seasons. Something else that's important to get into is that little qualifier in the trade. So it's a 2026, as of now, conditional third round pick that is going to the Philadelphia Eagles in order for the Jets to take on Hassan Reddick. And uh, that could turn into a second round pick if both of these things happen, not one or the other, both need to happen, which is 10 plus sacks from Hassan Reddick this year. And he has to play 67 and a half percent of snaps or more in the 2024 season. Now, over the last few years in Philly, he has gone way over that number. I believe he's been at 74% each of the last two seasons. But with how the Jets rotate their defensive line, I don't think he's going to be anywhere close to 67.5%. Last year, it was Jermaine Johnson who led the way for edge rushers at 66%. And yes, Hassan Reddick could play a little bit more on early downs, but even still, I don't see him going over that two-thirds of the snaps uh, number that he would have to hit in order for that qualifier to go through and that 2026 third round pick turn into a second round pick. I think if I had to guess today, probably going to be around 55 to 60, probably closer to 60% of snaps. I do think if he stays healthy, by the way, which I'm going to assume he does because he's done it throughout his entire career. He's been someone who plays a ton. I think he's going to give you double digit sacks. That one I'm not worried about at all. I'm going to say somewhere between 10 and 12 sacks seems seems right and going to play 55 to 60% of snaps which 
again, is going to fit really nicely for the 2024 Jets defense. Now, the final part of the debate is what do you do with him? Do you just keep him on the last year of his contract or do you give him a contract extension? And there seems like there was mixed reviews. Adam Schefter was saying that uh, there's not going to be a new contract and that he's going to just play out the season on this ye- on this you know on this one year deal. You have other reports coming out that the Jets are going to work on getting a new contract for him. He has a 15 million dollar cap hit this year, and for me, where I am right now, like if they decide to give him some sort of extension to keep him here, you know, maybe a couple more years after this season. I don't think it's the end of the world, but I'm not really rushing to do it. I would say kind of just let the season play out and see how it goes from there. Again, I'm not really in a rush to extend him, but in the 2024 season, which is, again, you're you're pushing your chips to the table. You're going for it this season. You're going for it in the 2025 window probably as well with Rodgers. And then 2026, I'm going to imagine, is a little bit of a retool as the Jets are more than likely going to have to transition and go to a different quarterback. But at the end of the day, Hassan Reddick fits the Jets' mold of what they're trying to do, which is they're trying to go for it and they're trying to win this year. They, Tyron Smith on a one-year deal. Trade for Morgan Moses, who has one year de- one year left on his contract. Trade for Hassan Reddick, who has one year left on his contract. And the last and maybe most important piece of the puzzle is this takes any thought of the defensive side of the football out at pick number 10. I know it's a very slim possibility that they would go edge again in the first round. It had been so classic if we were debating offensive line and weapon for months and months and months, and then the Jets end up going Dallas Turner at pick number 10 or Jared Verse at pick number 10. That would have been insane. And after you know the Hassan Reddick thing, it's just you're, you're glad that that's not going to be on the table. And then we can go right back to for the next, what, three weeks or so, four weeks to debate on whether the Jets should take an offensive lineman. Should they trade up for somebody? Should they trade down and get more picks? Should they just stay and take a weapon? That's going to be a much more fun debate. But as I've been saying here for the last little bit, after the Jets free agency period, in my opinion, I think you could make a strong case for any of the options available for the New York Jets. And as long as it's something on the offensive side of the ball as a weapon, offensive lineman in a trade up or trade down, whatever, I am going to be excited. I'm going to be happy with it. So let me know your thoughts on the Hassan Reddick trade and his impact on the New York Jets in 2024. Just wanted to give a little bit more insight and detail after the initial reaction yesterday. Please give a like before you go. Subscribe if you're new. I'll catch you guys next time.